and welcome to the podcast. I'm Risa. I am Ariana. And we're the Curlmeister Sisters. As a reminder, this podcast is rated T for Teen for strong language and mature themes. If you don't like that, well, this is, I, I, this isn't news. We say this literally every time. Um, but if this is for some reason the first one you decided to listen to for some fucking reason, again, head on over to Tammy Tucky's podcast because <laughs> she does a, a, a Nancy Drew podcast, Unlocked, and uh, there she has a clean talks with people about things. And stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what are we talking about today, sister? Um... Well, <laughs> we are talking about representation in her interactive media. <laughs> yeah, so we've actually been asked to talk about this several times, mm-hmm. and it's just been something that we've been looked at, and we're like, ah, no, we can't do that justice today. <laughs> but today, <laughs> her interactive tweeted... Be- a fantastic little little tweet there that they that they did today um, was they said it's a little image and everything and they say Asians and Asian and American Asians <laughs> have been an important part of the history of the entire video game industry. Our company stands firm in our support of the Asian Asian American and Pacific Islander communities. And then on the actual little like image it says this month we celebrate asian americans and pacific islander americans by recognizing and honoring the innumerable notable contributions they have made to this country the communities our games and family at her interactive yeah i first of all american asians what the fuck (laughs) that is the most backwards (laughs) thing i've ever heard (laughs) i i literally felt like i was having like a stroke When I was reading this the first time, I was like, what? (laughs) That's just, that's Looney Tunes. (laughs) It's like, because they're American first, is that it? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, Anyway. But I saw this and I immediately thought, the fucking audacity. Right. I, uh, yeah. Because I'm specifically thinking about, there's been a video that has been circulating on, like, Reddit and stuff recently of the voice actor for Rentaro. He also does another voice. I can't remember what it is. It made, like, a little recording on for YouTube that was for someone's, like, a fan had contacted him to ask for, like, a message for their sister's birthday or something like that. And so he and he did the voice of Rentaro. And he's he's white, and it was very uncomfortable. Um, you guys cannot kinda... see the horrified look on my face, you listening to the podcast. But I assure you, since this is the first I'm hearing of this video, oh really? My fucking god! Whoa! I thought I thought Sophia uh, shared it in the uh, Chromeister Sisters Discord. Um, probably. Um, I I'm you know me. I'm not active on Discord. Like. Yeah. At all. Valid. Um, but yeah, it was, yeah, man, it was a thing. So what I have done is I spent several hours today (laughs) uh, doing a lot of research and making a lot of charts. I'm very, very happy I made charts because charts are like my favorite thing in the world. Um, but it's just little facts about me. Uh, and spreadsheets. I also really enjoy spreadsheets. Um, my husband and I make them for every occasion. So I looked up. Nice out there doing them for fun right now. So yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, what I have done is I have collected the data of, I did two different things. One was I counted how many characters of various ethnicities are in the games. Um, so out of all of the characters in all of the Nancy Drew games, 73% of the characters are white. Um, I then broke that down into some other like categories. And from those other categories of the non-white characters, I researched all of the voice actors who portrayed 
these characters. Um, and out of all of those voice actors, they were 59% white of just the characters of color. Um, and it could be more than that because I have some things that I have no data on either. I'm unsure of the voice actors, like ethnicity or something. I don't want to assume things. So I have things as no data on some things. Um, because there, and there are just some, like Maya doesn't have a credit online. I can't find anywhere that- That is so that, weird. <laughs> it's it, it's like at this point, I was like, what is it just someone at her interactive who did it? Like, because it's not like she says very much. Yeah. But I don't know. I so, mean, she says enough to warrant a credit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I agree. But yeah, so that's the data I have collected. It's not yeah. the only stuff we're going to talk about. No. Um, I have it broken up into several different things because we've been asked to talk specifically about cultural representation in the games. So the actual, like, the cultures that are represented in the games, is it good representation? What are we missing? <laughs> stuff like that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm giving like a, a like a talk. The next part of our talk will focus on. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm I'm going full full like talk mode. That um, is perfectly teaching mode fine. Is it what is... I'm doing right now. It's good. Um, <laughs> so do we? What do we want to talk about first? Just go down your notes. Okay. Okay. So cultural so cultural representation. representation. <laughs> so. I kind of took these um, and I separated them in, t in two categories. Games that are set abroad that are we learn stuff about the culture of the place or games that are set in the U.S. where we learn about the culture. Um, so games set outside the U.S., how do they do? Do we learn the culture history of the country we're in? Let's find um, out. Let's find out. So for our, like, European countries, Danger by Design, do we learn anything about France? Um, we learn that the catacombs are a thing. Okay. And we, we learn some hunt. French words. Yeah. Sort of. Nope, I think that's it. No, pretty that's positive. It. Other than uh, all we learn that, is that, that World War II happened, but we don't know about that exactly. Holocaust thing. <laughs> that's another thing in this is where are all the Jewish characters? Yeah, there's none. Not even a not even a I Jewish mean, like, name in there, really. No, you could like, is Alexi supposed to be? I was going to say I could argue that um, Alexi uh, could be um, could be Jewish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, his, his name is actually. Is it Polish? It's, um, it, it, there is, it, it's, it's, um, shit, what is it? I looked it up. It's like, anyway, but it definitely is, is associated with, like, um, Jewish people yeah. who came from Eastern Europe to yeah. escape persecution then, and then. Yeah, so that's <sighs> the only one I can really think of, but Curse of Blackmore Manor, we learn about Cockney rhyming slang, and that's literally it is that not all there is to it <laughs> <laughs> go up the well, my husband does say and then i'll just go up the apple in pairs okay. so because his mom used to used to say it and i think that's very cute um phantom of venice <sighs> we do learn a little more about i would say that phantom of venice we start learning a little more about the area a little specifically about venice though Mm -hmm. Not not Italy as a whole, yeah. but I still wouldn't say. But in all fairness, like Italy can be is broken down into separate places because yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, haunting of Castle Malloy. Do we learn anything about Ireland? No, we literally learn nothing about Ireland. Nothing in this game has Ugh, anything. We to learned do that with they Ireland. spend a lot of time at the at the pub, and yeah, and that they are very superstitious. Yes, of course. Come on. Very important. Um, and also more World War II for some reason. More World Captive War II Captive Curse, that didn't however. Happen. Captive Curse, which did, which very plainly does not talk about World War II. Um, 
It's just like he talks about the time everything. before and the time after yes. World War II. Yes, we're going to just completely skip this. I get it. I get that you don't want to make a game about Germany just about Nazis. I get that. That is, yeah. But still, it's, it's kind of weird. I think if they if they touched in that in other games, it would be less weird, conspicuous. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we don't learn anything about Germany. I like we learn more about glass blowing than we do. Yeah, we learn nothing than about Germany, Germany itself. And I feel like that that is a good point because it is definitely a fucking uh, a, a rich guy. Well, isn't he? Is he American? No, the guy who owns Marcus it? is German. Marcus is German. Yeah, he has that terrible German accent. Do you remember? Nah, apparently I blank. I blank out oh, bad German accents. It's it's just terrible. It's incredible it's just how awful. I can just filter them out in my memory. Yeah. But um, Silent Spy, we do learn about the bagpipe. Um, we learn that tartans exist. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even though those are v- Victorian invention. Mm-hmm. Um, we learn about Scottish food. Actually, I feel like Silent Spy is the only one where we've learned anything about the country we're in, in, this, in these European countries so far. Because... Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, well, um, you'll notice that there's actually some stuff about each of the next ones in the different countries yeah. because it's like they heard the complaints. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they went, oh, you guys want to actually learn about these places. Oh. I guess we could do that. Weren't we a learning gang company at one point? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Labyrinth of Lies, we learned nothing about Greece. We just learned about some history. I mean, mythology. That's it. Yeah. Um, Uh, And a little bit about mm -hmm. um, architecture. Yeah. Sea of Darkness, we do do at least learn Icelandic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think that's okay, honestly. I think that helps. That makes it at least feel like it matters where we are. Mm -hmm. Whereas it feels like in all of those other European countries, it's just like... It doesn't feel like we're in that country. No. So, the non-European countries are interesting because, like, Shadow at the Water's Edge, we actually, they go pretty big on learning about Japan and Japanese culture. We learn about the tea ceremony. We learn about origami. We learn about uh, katakana. Basically, there Um, was a weeb heading the... um... Yeah. The (laughs) The puzzle department. (laughs) basically so we and we have to learn like it, it's actually i think pretty good it's very clumsily done though yes um especially in the <laughs> the bar is so low it really is it really um is. <laughs> but uh it is definitely clumsy how they address some cultural stuff like with with yumi and miyoko and mm-hmm. the the diacon and everything that's it's it's kind of mm, you know, but we do actually feel I feel it's more immersed than the other ones. Yes, because somebody actually like tried. Yeah, you know, like no, like it, the, honestly, the music we're just, surrounded with it, it 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 the the I think it's. I feel like it, they ch- specifically whoever pitched that one chose it because it is a place that you cannot fake as well. Yeah. You know, cuz you're it's going to have all kinds of different things because it's it, it, totally <sighs> Anyway, it doesn't matter. Keep going. <laughs> it, it really makes me wish that we could have another game set somewhere in another country in mm-hmm. Asia because I think that if they went with that same kind of thing in like if we went to like the Philippines or mm-hmm. something yes and that same kind of immersion would be so fantastic um not gonna happen no, but it, no it's would, not it it just makes me feel like what could have happened because of how good that one was um Tomb of the Lost Queen though there's I mean we're just in the desert there's nothing about that that's actually like 
Egypt because we're not in and Egypt. It doesn't really we're get just... into even the ancient Egyptians that were it doesn't. like digging up very well. Uh, Nefertari. That's the one, right? It's... Yeah, Nefertari was a, a very fascinating historical figure. Um, and, and they, they just like, literally just made up yeah, her final she was resting so place. So pretty, this is just... and 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 so Ramses put her here. Yeah, I'm just like, how do you get away with that? How are you? How are you doing that? <laughs> Whatever. Um, and then Shattered Medallion is in New Zealand, and we it there's no mention of it being in New Zealand. Like, what we is the point of it being Maori in New Zealand? Words. We we learn a couple Maori words and we learn about sheep. That's it. That's that's what we got. What, what else is there? <laughs> <laughs> How to lose a woman in six words or less. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So that's like the countries abroad. The con- yeah, the games that are abroad. Mm-hmm. How do we feel like the only one I feel stands out is Shadow at the Water's Edge and maybe Silent Spy a little bit? Yeah. It does. For me, Silent Spy at least feels more like you're actually. It's not just like. God, it's so hard to express these things in words. Yeah. Like (laughs) in Captive Curse, you are in that one location. The entire time. So there's no way. It's like it could be in Germany. Or it could be anywhere. You know. Mm -hmm. Same with Tomb of the Lost Queen. It could be here. Or it could be anywhere. Like there's nothing about it that tells me it's there. Um, But I feel like Sea of Darkness does. Yes. (gasps) Sea of Darkness does a good job. Did I accidentally say Silent Spy? You did. Okay. I meant Sea of Darkness. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, no. Silent Spy is it could just be anywhere. Yeah. We're learning about some things, but it it just it doesn't have that atmosphere that Sea of Darkness has. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That's that's really like all of these places that could have been really cool like immersing us in the culture, they just didn't. They didn't none of that stuff was like truly offensive, I feel. Mhm. Um but otherwise, well, I don't know. Andrew was a little offended at the accents in uh, <laughs> Curse of Blackmore Manor. <laughs> well, so, we all were. That, so, yeah. You know. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's those. <laughs> exactly. Um, however, with games in the U.S. where we're learning about cultures abroad cultures that are not just you know white american basically (laughs) um like what how do they do how do we rank them really because we get like secret of the scarlet hand and that like we've we've talked about it Mm -hmm. so much but secret of the scarlet hand just has some straight up made up stuff in it yeah it's bonkers and it does the really really racist thing of and then the Mayans just disappeared. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them. But they just, Who knows? Just appeared. They're just gone. What happened to them? That hmm. It's it. That's just so incredibly racist. And they did. They they combined like three cultures into one. They did. Like yeah. it was supposed to be about the Maya, um, which then. Isn't that kind of awkward? Because isn't, like, the ex- more accepted term Ma- the Maya, not the Mayans? Yes. Yes, it is. So, like, I might But, be... you know, white people early uh, 21st century. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? <sighs> and it, like, they could have done so much with that. And I do feel like we learn, like, they put more effort into it than a lot of the places set abroad sure so like at least we do learn more even if it's not completely true about that than say danger by design where we're like okay france catacombs you it's know it's just it's so crazy how they say that incans and aztecans yeah <laughs> 
Um, it's there's just there's a wealth of knowledge they could have pulled from. Yeah, there are people of Mayan blood today who still celebrate. Um, yeah, traditions that they've you know brought back. Yeah, and they could and they don't have even, pulled from like, those things. They don't even address like why these practices stopped being practiced, which actually really leads me into my next one of Creature of Kapu Cave. <laughs> Talking about things that are like, and, the, the, you know, the Native Hawaiians did this and this, and then in the early 1800s, they stopped. Just stopped. It was crazy. Just crazy. I don't know what the what? difference was. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's just they just they're just it, they don't teach us about Hawaii like at all. Mm-mm. We don't learn any any Hawaiian. No, and that's crazy. And we we don't we like the only thing in that is like Pele exists. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for that game. Yeah, they, they uh, as a Nintendo fan uh, forever said in the chat, um, they don't really bring up the topic of assimilation ever about ever. anything. No. No matter who they're talking about. Like, even yeah. just recently in uh, Midnight in Salem, Midnight in Salem. There, Salem, there was no, you know, talk about... Early settlers coming in and and nope, trying nope. to Terra Nullis. Nope, nope. We're learning about Terra Nullis. <laughs> it's empty. It's fine. <gasps> no one's here. And we're learning about Jesus. reparations as they pertain to white people. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, it was so. Oh. Sorry. No, I can't. I can't keep thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. No. Oh no, God. They, they, they do not miss a chance to. Um, completely jump over um the topic of of white people being horrible honestly if we're gonna just like yeah. boil it down yeah because then the next thing is shadow uh ranch mm-hmm. we learn about the petroglyphs and we learn about the cliff dwellings and then as it pertains we just to stop white talking people. about them we just <laughs> stop talking about them the moment we are no longer I just, mm, uh, mm mm. I, yeah, I would, the overhaul I would do on that game. I, it's just one of those things of we just don't even learn. And then we have Mary Yazi in that game, and we could have done so much with her. Okay. And instead, she's just selling turquoise. She's selling turquoise road. jewelry in the deserts of, uh, of Arizona. Arizona. It's just, uh, we Bitch, you should be over so in New Mexico. Much. Come on. <laughs> but it's just like, yeah. I don't understand why they did that. And then she was voiced by a white woman. No. You're telling me that was not a native woman? I know. I'm shocked. God. After all, so, she talks like this and is like, what the fuck are you, what is this? <laughs> Yeah, so that, that brings us right into representation and characters. Hey, 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 see, it flows. So, yep, yep. So with our, the, the characters, right? First off, I want to talk, just touch really quickly on just disability rep, because we've talked about it before. Mm-hmm. But disability representation is also completely missing from the games. They, basically what we have is Gunnar is missing a couple fingers, um, May is a burn victim, and Casey Porterfield is hard of hearing, and that's what we got. That's it. That's it. We, yeah. Not, that's not great. No, it's not. <laughs> like, and, oh, we get a little bit of, um, with Colton. I mean. Has anxiety. Characters are PTSD. sedentary in this in these games. I know. How hard is it to just have them on a wheelchair? Just something. Or have a, anything. Like, oh, oh, Dr. Buford has a cane. 
Oh, an old man has a cane? I mean, but there is that, at least. But, um, I think. It just feeds into their, it just feeds into their ageism. It does. Because when we look at representation of characters in age groups, it, we get overwhelming amounts of just young people. And then we have a couple children, and then we have a couple older people, and they are all deemed as annoying. All of the children are annoying. Mm Mm-hmm. They're, they're like, made to be annoying. Lucas, though, is pretty good. Um, but, and then all of the older adults are doddering, cranky, forgetful. Yeah. So we're just filled with stereotypes. Yeah. Um, and that's really what the characters are in general, because that's what we get a lot of when we get to, um, like, the character, just representation for... Uh, ethnicity and race as well um is we use a lot of stereotypes um partially because like they're it's shorthand so they don't have to like they don't have to say things and be uncomfortable so basically it's like (sighs) so out of all of these characters that we have out of all of the characters of color, 31% of them are black. But for the voice actors, only 4.8% of the voice actors are black. That is Out of crazy. 31% of the characters. Um, and then we have several like Native American characters, Native Hawaiian, Maori and we don't see that at all in the voice actors. Um, that's just, we don't have any whatsoever. Um, or actually, we have one. So out of the how many Asian characters, like 18% of the characters, no, more than that. Like 27% of the characters are Asian, like East Asian and everything. But we have one voice actor. Who is? Um, I separated how many, um, I separated between uh, Asian American and South Asian and then Japanese because we have five characters who we're not going to put down as Asian American because they are, they are from Japan. Um, they mm-hmm. live in Japan mm-hmm. and Hal is an exchange student. So yeah, he's also not American. So didn't want to say that. And I wanted to specifically pull apart South Asian as well, because that is like, you don't get as much of that representation at all. So the fact that we have 7% of the characters of color are South Asian, but we don't see any of that in the voice actors. And, like, the question here is, like, who's at fault, right? And the people at fault are the casting directors and stuff. (laughs) They're the ones at fault. We're not blaming... Well, I'm blaming a little bit, uh, but the voice actors for taking roles like this, because Mm -hmm. one, voice actors don't know what job they're getting. They don't really know what character they're getting at all. They just do it. But a couple of them, I would say, like the voice actor for um, Sheriff Hernandez, who also does Alejandro, Mm. um, is a white guy. And he does that very, very stereotypical accent. I wouldn't say it's like, it's not like a terrible accent accent but it's a very like it's it's racist. stereotypical chicano accent yeah it's it's like it it's not great same with like out of all of the characters right all of the characters of color only three of the voice actors were the same ethnicity as their character um so john gray and Lauren Holt are both actually played by black voice actors. And the voice actress for Miwako is Japanese. Um, otherwise, that's that's all we got. So then you think about all of the other characters who are black and they're being portrayed by white people. How we then look at that performance is difficult. Because there's a, just a, a general amount of trying to put on a black accent that is 
it's racist. Like, <laughs> you know, it's 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 that kind of like digital blackface situation going on. If you give a white person the role and then tell them to sound black, it's never going to be done in a respectful manner. No. <laughs> it's especially when there are voice actors, black voice actors out there and they should they should be getting these roles and they're not. <laughs> This has been a major bummer so far. So far, actually, this episode is kind of a bummer. Yeah. I just got really, I saw that tweet this morning and I was like, oh no. Oh, yeah. Because when you look at specifically how they de- how they deal with the Asian characters, mm-hmm. specifically talking about all of the Japanese characters and listening to the, like, how, I don't know. I, I'm going to move, remove Hal from the equation because I do not know who um, I was not able to find any pictures of the voice actor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know about him. I'm going to remove him from this. And with Miwako, we do know that she is Japanese. So I'll remove her from talking about this as well. Mm-hmm. But Rentaro, Yumi, and Takai are all voiced by white voice actors. And their performances are over-exaggerated. Um and not accurate. Like, if they were accurate, mm-hmm. I would be at least like, okay, I understand. But they're not. They're just, they're bad. <laughs> they're just bad accents. <laughs> and they're racist. Yeah. I... I'm I'm really, really feeling just, let's let's redo the entire game series... We'll punch up the stories. We'll have, you know, appropriate casting. We will, you know, fucking put in the characters of color that could have been. (laughs) We'll just fucking, we'll just, we'll just redo all this. Guys, let's reset. Let's, let's. (sighs) Yeah. The, like, representation wise, though, in numbers with characters. Um, as I said, it is, we have 112 white characters. Um, that's 73.2%. I'm not including, um, I only included each character once. So if, didn't matter if they were in different games. So Bess and George only count for one. Uh, Dwayne Powers only counts for one person as well. So really it is, it is more than that when you include, like, Nancy in every single game and you include... You know, Carson, because I don't know. We don't ever see anything about Carson. Mm-hmm. We can't specifically say that he's he's white, but Kate Drew, we know. I feel like we can we can really gamble, and I, um, but at the same time, you know. I'm being very conservative with these numbers because yeah. I don't want to <laughs> skew things by how I interpret them. Um, otherwise, like, we have... The fewest amount of people is we have two Arabic characters. So that's 1% of the characters. Uh, (sighs) We have more Japanese characters than we have Arabic characters. And, like, that's from one country. We have more (laughs) characters from that one country than we do from an entire, like, region. Right. We have three characters that are Pacific Islander, and so I'm including Kiri as Maori because it's implied. Yeah. If, so, yeah. you know. Um, and there's a very big disparity between the characters that are considered more East Asian um, versus how many are South Asian. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, we have how many? Three characters. So, that are South Asian. That's 2% of the characters in general for, like, an entire subcontinent. <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. And they're each from different um, yeah, countries. Yeah, so, yeah, and I. I 
that's one of those things I specifically am saying South Indi- South mm-hmm. Asian and not specifically Indian is because I know that those mm-hmm. I'm going by last name. So Nigel Mukherjee, Mukherjee is an Indian last name. Um, I did a lot of research on these things. Patel, mm-hmm. uh, Karlina Patel, and then Leela Yadav. Um, all of those were more Indian than not. So they got put in that. But that's only, that's three characters. We have a couple characters who, like, I wasn't sure where to put them, so I kind of counted some of them just as white. Like, mm-hmm. Jing Jing. No, Jing okay. Jing Jing, Jing, Jing is just I, a white person who is... Uh, I, she just, just, that's her stage name. You're just going to have to, like... I'm wondering. She is so know. white Australian. That's, that's, like, that's who she is. That, that's what she is. Yeah, I, I, it's just one of those things where I'm just like, I'm taking her to be white in this situation. Though we do have, so there are three Native American characters in the entire series. Um, and two of them are not explicitly Native American, but the writers have come back and said that they are. So Jenna Devlin and Debbie from, uh, Trail of the Twister. Um, the writers have come back and say, and ha- and have said they are they were supposed to be native. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I th- in game we don't have anything. Yeah, they're just vaguely brown. Yeah, they're 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 beige and uh, <laughs> and fucking uh, Jenna has some like. Yeah, I mean, is it is North, it North like, Pacific um like. Markings? Is it better or worse that they don't just use incredibly, like, stereotypical, like, face facial features? Because, like, that could have been worse, right? Like, if Debbie, they'd just given her, like, the really high cheekbones and stuff like that. Well, sure. Like, but just, just make them look like people. I mean, I agree. I, as, if they can just none make of, them look like people. None of the characters of these games the, look like people. The... The thing about representation is representing people, so they just need to find character models. If if they can't like, yeah, come up with these people on their own, find these character models to reference. Because I don't know how else you're gonna do it. Y- you, yeah. yeah, pretty much. It's like they never saw a person before. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, also, I wasn't able to go through all of the um, voice actors for white characters as well. So there may well be a bunch of white characters voiced by people of color. Um, I just wasn't able to find the data. Mm. So, yeah. <sighs> So, so what do we want to see? I think is just where we can go from there. What, what do we think would be constructive? See, Fatima is another one of those characters where I'm like, I don't know. She has a bobble head on. Yeah, Fatima, honestly, the way she says it, I think she got the name because... Her mom thought it sounded fancy. Yeah, maybe. It's something like that. I don't like, know. I'm... Like someone named Merlene, because cause it sounds kind of like Merlin. Um, you know? Yeah, I don't know. That's that's all I'm hearing from it. Yeah. A lot of the voice oh. actors do a lot of things. Yeah. They do a lot of voices. Um, actually, you know what was really helpful for my research for this? was uh unlocked yeah because she has all those voice actors on there and they talk about things about things so they talk about the roles that they play so (laughs) like she talked to the voice actors who did who did jj fatima and mary yazi jesus yeah there are some people who also did like a bunch of characters and it's just yeah all the it's all the white ones that get called back again. You know? This fucked up. <laughs> but uh what we would like to see. 
what we would like to not see that. to fix these things. It, it's yeah. pretty easy. Constructive criticism is just um, do better. Yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> it's just... But, okay. I think the most important thing is to make sure that not every game has white people in it. Yeah. Because when I was looking at it, there are there are 12 games who only have white people. Six of them are in the US and six of them are in European countries. Um, that's 12 games out of 33. That's bonkers. That, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, honestly... And the thing is, is like, in Italy, it's not just white people in Italy. Uh-uh. You know this, right? Like, same with France. These these are countries that have people who aren't white. Like, there are Europeans of color. I know this is shocking to her interactive, but not everyone in Europe is white. I, it's shocking. I know. It's okay. You guys just take a breath. <laughs> I just, <sighs> because it's, it is mostly like the ones like Captive Curse and um, we have, well, technically um, Sea of Darkness has a single person of color. Dagny is vaguely uh, Latina coded. Bull fucking shit. No, she's she white. <laughs> no, she's not. It has been, it was, it was, uh, confirmed that, no, she is Latina. Her last name is Silva. I, 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 she's also a lesbian from one text message. So uh, the bar is really low for me right now. That's the other thing. That's what we yeah, don't have that's representation one. for either. It's just gender and sexual, like, orientations. Could yeah, it could be name. Silva could be her married name, but no. The specific stuff in the text messages are that Soren says her hyphenated last name, and then she says back, no, it's just Silva now. Because they broke up. That's right, okay. So Silva is her name. Um but, you know la- la- Latino people can be white yes but so it's like i'm not ruling out that she's white but she is also that's one of those really weird like the other thing is to (laughs) when looking at all of this data it's like none of this is a science because if it was a science it would be racist so (laughs) like yeah i'm you know a lot of these are vague concepts because when you're talking about Latino people, right, there are white people in all of those countries, too. But they are still, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, LGBT, we have zero, like, can we have one canon lesbian. Yep. And then we have... One canon is Soren's. No, it, that's not technically like in game canon, but out of game canon, the writer said that he was gay or ace. I can't remember. Hmm. But other than that, it's just like, like yeah, I have head canons that Moira is by, mm-hmm. Kate Drew was by. Yeah. Uh, you know, Katie Firestone is trans. Yeah. Um, like, the, those are my head cannons, but they're not in, like, in universe canon. Yeah. So they don't count. <laughs> Even if you're just coding someone to be something, like, in, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't count. You know what I yeah. mean? Yes. Yeah. So. But I will die on the hill that uh, Katie and Jenna are just ex-girlfriends. And that's why they're so 
They're just so yeah. hostile because they're exes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh... Jenna, like, that's dumped this Katie stuff into the ocean and just, like... <laughs> yeah. Technically, that's really who, who you know, she she messed up the boat, but not... Not to, uh... Like, that's, that's, that's real. Katie did steal back the boat parts, obviously. Because <laughs> they're just, you know, <laughs> they still have each other's keys and they haven't given them back yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, uh, that's what we have to say on that. Um, I don't know what you guys would tell us, but you can contact us on. <laughs> well, you guys can tell us um, how you Your feel about the that? about representation in the games. Let's 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 discuss. Unless you're going to be like an asshole, let's discuss it. You know, tell us. Uh, do you feel represented? Um, what do you you know? Oh, I think that is something that is something that we should address in that we are both white. Yeah. So we do get to see ourselves represented in this and in that aspect, Mm -hmm. right? There are white women in the games. Um, A lot of them. (laughs) A lot of them. Like, most of the characters (laughs) are, really. But, like, for me... Also, both of us as disabled people are not seeing ourselves represented. Yeah. And for me, as a bisexual, gender-fluid person, I don't see that either. Yeah. So that's our little our little caveat, I guess, <laughs> for the situation. But yeah, uh, you can contact us on our <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, YouTube, Discord, Twitter... <laughs> and our fancy website, crawlmeistersisters.knifefightclub.com. You can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. And in those places, you can uh, leave us comments. Just, just Sometimes we just need someone to tell us that they love us. Because we you know what? You know a who, comment, a review in an entire year. You know who's really underrepresented in Nancy Drew games? Podcasters. <laughs> I'm just saying, not a single fucking one. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> God, that's okay. Um, <laughs> if you want to support us, you can subscribe to us over on Twitch to get access to a lot of stuff. We got emotes. We, we got <coughs> podcast night VODs. You get the backer channel in the Discord. Or you can support us over on patreon.com slash sisters to get access to Podcast Night VODs, backer channel on the Discord, stream cat pictures, and you can tell us what to talk about. So yeah, as a reminder, I'm Risa. I'm Ariana. And we're the Crawlmeister Sisters, and we're asking you guys to stay sleuthy. <laughs>